is a warden of the local prison here, and he just informed me that four of his guys were sent to Newton uh, because they have an active shooter going on right now. And so uh, let's stop and pray for that. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for a hedge of protection around our men that's going in that arm's way and just pray for God's victory. Father, we don't know the situation, but God, you do. God, I pray right now for the men that are going, that are there. God, I pray I had your protection around them. God, we speak life over them. God, I pray right now they will come home safe and sound. And Father, whatever is going on, God, I pray right now that you get the glory. Amen. God, we don't understand all this chaos and all this craziness. But God, we know you. And that's enough. Amen. And so we know that your hand of mercy and grace is there. Yes. We know that your hand of protection is there. Yes. We know that everything we stand in need of is there when we call upon you. Amen. So God, one more time, we call upon you. Yes. And we ask you to be there. Yes. And whatever they need, God, you supply. Yes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is faithful, amen. amen? Got a lot of things going on. But God is bigger. Amen. It's a good thing you gave me this message today. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I believe with all my heart the message I'm about to speak about today, God laid on my heart this week as I was just pondering about different things going on. And I will tell you before I even tell you, before I say anything, that uh, this message probably could be preached, can be preached probably several different ways, different methods, different ways of using it, but this morning, I really want to talk about something that God just really showed me this week as I was just, you know, sometimes we get crazy. No, I'm, I'm not by myself out there, amen? I know some crazy people up in here, amen? But sometimes we just get crazy and just things go on and it just kind of makes our minds just go bananas. But all of a sudden, sometimes God has a way of just kind of if you're a fisherman, kind of a way of just casting out there, catching you and reeling you back a little bit every once in a while, amen? That's kind of how I felt this week. I felt like God was just casting his net, grabbed a hold to me and reeled me back and began to show me, instead of ponder on all the things that's taking place, begin to rejoice in the blessings of God. God is a God of blessings. And we, as his people, walk in the blessings of God. Now, to explain to you in just a, just a layout, a simple form, uh, this morning I woke up and I was writing some of this stuff out. But one of the things I want you to understand is when we're obedient to the voice of the Lord, we're obedient to the things of God, then the blessings is a byproduct of that. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, don't shout me down because I really need to hear from you today. Amen. The blessings are a byproduct of our obedience. Now, I will say to you very clearly that at one time, some people say, oh, I don't do anything for expecting anything in return. Hogwash. Yeah, come on now. Man. I'm just telling you, hogwash. I grew up in that. I grew up in that denomination where it made you feel like you're just lucky to be alive and all that kind of stuff. That's not what my Bible says. Yeah, come on now. Come on. My Bible says I am the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Man. And my Bible says when we obey the voice of the Lord and we do what God commands us to do, that he will pour his blessings upon us. And so when I walk in the blessings of God and I walk in the favor of God and I walk in the obedience of God, I just walk and expect God's blessings. Amen. 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 I was telling somebody, and I've said this before from the pulpit, but I was in line somewhere recently and I was talking about the blessings of God and I told that person, I said, man, I am so blessed. I said, somebody broke in my pickup truck, installed a CD player. Amen. Amen. That's when you bless. Amen? Amen. Amen. When they break in your vehicle and put something there, you know God is good. Break in, take your wallet, and put a 20 in it. Amen? Come on now. now. Blessings of God is trying to follow you this morning, if you understand. Now, when I begin to think about the blessings of God, I immediately, you cannot think about the blessings of God without thinking about Abraham. Amen? Amen. Amen. The father of blessings, really. And so pick up here. I want you to see this. Abraham is in a position where all of a sudden, chapter 11 is where you find, uh, uh, um, oh, what is that? Tell me out, Julia. When it, the Tower of Babylon. The Tower of Babylon was the Tower of Babel. They were Babylon, amen? The Tower of Babel is where they were trying to find a place where they were trying to make a name for themselves. And so they said, we're going to build a tower. We're going to make a name for ourselves. 
And all of a sudden now, Abraham jumps into the picture, and this is where we pick up here. Abraham is leaving his land. He's leaving all the people he knows. He's leaving his local Walmart. He's leaving his local restaurant. He's leaving his local barbershop. He's leaving everything that he knows, and he's going out in a place you don't have a clue where he's going. But God said go, and he's going to obey God. Okay? We pick up here in verse 12. Now, the Lord has spoke to Abram. He's not even Abraham yet. He's Abram. He says, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I show you. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a bold step. That's a bold step. When you're going to step out by faith, God says go. You don't even know where you're going, but you're going to step out and say, God, I'm going to trust you and believe you, and you just go. Amen? That's a miracle by itself right there. So now he's stepping out. He says, for your family, from your family's house, to a land that I will show you. And he says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You shall be a blessing. All of a sudden, now we find from them trying to do it themselves, God saying, listen, if you do what I tell you to do, I'll make you a blessing. I will bless you. See, understanding that God has more blessings than we have of ourselves. Amen? God knows more about this thing than we do. He goes and says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And you and your families of the earth shall be blessed. We are the family of Abraham. Amen? We are the seed of Abraham. So we're now operating the blessings that Abraham had when he obeyed God. We now receive some of the blessings he had there also. Amen? Amen? Now, I want you to see something, and I'm not going to develop this, but on a side note. I'm just going to bring a little side note over here. I want you to understand that there was a time when Abraham, obviously God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're going to have a son, which we know is Isaac. Now, during this time, Abraham is old, and Sarah, his wife, Obviously, she was a beautiful woman, a very gorgeous woman, because every time he would go into a kingdom, the king tried to take her. He even lied and said it was his sister. Go back and study that. It's an interesting study. But all these things are taking place. And all of a sudden now, Abraham's in a position where he's thinking, well, you know what? I'm a little old. And Sarah says, I'm a little old. And so all of a sudden now, they get their minds together, which is a dangerous thing to do. And all of a sudden, they get their self together and think, you know what? Let's help God out. Don't we do that sometimes? God is trying to bless us and, and just being obedient to his word, and all of a sudden, we get in the way. We get in, all totally in the way. So all of a sudden, now Abraham's in the way. He, he, he walks up, and he's like, you know what? Maybe you're right, Sarah. So Sarah says, listen, why don't you sleep with my maidservant, and let's have a baby by her because she's a lot younger, and we can you know, have a baby quicker, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. So he does. Now, what happens there is Ishmael shows up, okay? Now, I want you to know something, and I'm not going to develop this because it's going to take somebody much smarter than I am and much in tune to this stuff than I am. But I want you to know something. All the stuff that you see going on in the East today or, or overseas and all this fighting and all these battles, a lot of that stems from that. Yeah, come, come on. Because it stems from Ishmael, which was not God's promise. Come on. It stems from Ishmael, which was not exactly what God's plan was because Isaac was God's plan. Amen. See, we always mess it up. Amen? Amen? So if you go back and you look at some of that stuff, you'll realize some of that mess comes out of that. But even through all that, even when all that took place, God still said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to bless those who bless you, and I'm going to curse those who curse you. So I want you to know this morning that we're blessed. So when you follow up and you see all of a sudden now he's blessed, and uh, Isaac comes into the picture, things are going well. And if you really study this thing out, what's about to take place is not something really unusual. To us, we see it as very barbaric because now he's going to sacrifice his son Isaac, which was not something very uncommon during that time. And Isaac obviously was old enough to understand what was taking place when he took Isaac to the altar. And all of a sudden now, here's Abraham. He's thinking to himself, oh, God, I'm 100 years old. Sarah's 90, whatever she is. And all of a sudden now you finally give us a son, and you're fixing to take him away from us. Don't we sound like that sometimes? Because, see, we don't see the big picture. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we want to help God out. Whoever tried to help God out, I do. There's times in my life when I'm going through something and God's going, just shut up and let me deal with it. And I'm going, but God, but God, let me help, but God. Here's the problem is we get our butts in the way, amen? And all of a sudden now he's crying out, let me help you out. Let me tell you what we need to do here. And so now God says, listen, I want, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. So he goes and he gets to the place where he's fixing to sacrifice Isaac. And as he's fixing to sacrifice Isaac, we know the story. God supplies a lamb in the thicket. A lamb is there waiting, and they use a the lamb to do a sacrifice. God always shows up. God's timing is always perfect. Amen. So anytime that we're walking in the blessing of God, anytime we walk in the obedience of God, anytime we're doing what God's called us to do, remember this. God's timing is better than your timing. Amen. God's timing is always perfect. Yes, we amen. get ahead of God. I'm telling you this morning, if you want to operate in the blessing of God and you want to walk in the blessing of God, let God do his job. 
Amen? Amen? Too many times we try to do his job for him. I made a statement this morning. I was talking about years ago when I first started pastoring. It was 19 years ago. I left to go overseas. There was something going on in, in, in Bogota, and I went over there with several men to see. It was a revival taking place, and I went over there to see what was going on, and God really ministered to me during that time. And I came back, and I did something that I wouldn't recommend doing again because I scared my wife to death. She didn't know what I was going to do, and I said it. But my wife was sitting on the front row, and I stood up that Sunday morning, and I said to the church, I, as your pastor, resign. Well, my wife liked to fell out the front row. She's like, oh, my God, you didn't tell me anything about that. But the point I was trying to make is, you know what? I resign as a pastor because I want God you to pastor. Amen. So we've got to get to a place where we resign of ourselves and let God be God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Am I speaking to somebody today? Amen. Is this word for somebody today? Amen. Because if it's not, we can close the book and go to the house. But I believe it is. Amen. I believe it's a word that we need to hear because I want you to understand God wants to bless you. Do not be afraid of the blessings of God. Do not run from the blessings of God. I told people, you know, just recently I was talking about how every time I felt like God gave me something new, for a while there I was kind of like hide behind it. Like, oh, I don't want anybody to know I got a new truck. I don't want anybody to know I got this, got that. But you know what? Somebody said to me one time, I'd rather know I've got a blessed pastor than a cursed pastor. And I'm here to tell you that I am blessed. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not hiding behind it. I am telling you that you can walk in the blessings of God if you want to. You got to want to. Well, that may be a blessing for you, and maybe that works for you, maybe it works for you. Listen, I'm telling you, the Bible is not a prejudiced book. The Bible does not find favoritism with me more than it finds favoritism with you or anyone else in this room. The same promises that God promised me, he promises you. you got to learn to stand up and say, you know what, God, I want that. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to walk it out. And you watch what God is going to do in your life. Man, I'm preaching good this morning. I should be on TBN, amen? amen. <laughs> Sorry. Put that on TV too, amen? All through here, we find different places talking about the blessings. One place we find that he speaks about blessings, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to highlight some of it. We find over in Deuteronomy 28, which we call the blessing chapter. Blessings on obedience. 28 says, now it shall come to pass... If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commands, which I command you today, that the Lord, your God, will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings, and all these blessings, well, maybe some blessings are all. It says all. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I love that. I, I, I imagine in my mind for just a second the blessing of God tracking me down. Amen? Amen. Just chasing me down and tackling me and going, here, take this. Amen? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's, and all the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall be in the city. Blessed shall be seen in the country. Blessed shall be in the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herbs, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flock. Blessed shall be the basket of your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed when you go out. Amen? The Lord will cause your enemies. The Lord will cause your enemies. The Lord will cause your enemies. I don't know about you, but this is a good blessing here. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. They might come in that door, but they're coming out here in all the different directions. Amen? Get out of the way. They're going to bust a hole in here because they're leaving out here seven different ways. They might come in one, but they're going in others. Listen, I'm telling you, God will protect you. When you understand that you are a kid of the Most High God, when you realize that God loves you, when you realize that God is not mad at you, when you realize that God wants good things for you, then you'll begin to stand up and say, me too, I too, we too can be blessed. With the things God's promise. I'm speaking to somebody today. I promise you today, if you grab a hold of this message, you'll leave here different. You'll leave here understanding that God wants good things for those who obey the voice of the Lord. All through here, he talks about the Lord will cause your enemies to rise. He says, the Lord will command the blessings on you. He also says, he says, blessings on your storehouse and all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you, your land, which the Lord your God has given you. Again, he's talking about there's places in, in Malachi when he talks about as we rob God from our tithes and offerings. Come on. You don't like that. He wants us to be blessed. He wants to bless when we obedient in that area. You see, most people, they, they, they immediately tune out right there. Boom. I might as well go. Boom. He's talking about do, boom. Can I tell you something? I'm not afraid of that. Because, see, I want you to understand God wants to bless you. 
in those areas of your life. If you're obedient in those areas, you got to be obedient. you got to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to obey what you say, and I'm going to do what you said to do. Yeah, now, right. David speaks here over King David in Psalms 128. He's talking about blessings here, and he's talking about blessings of those. He says, blesses, in 28, he says, blesses everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hand, you shall be happy, 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 and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like the fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Can I tell you something? When you're doing the right things and you're being the right husband, you're going to have the right wife. Oh, we don't like that one. Let me move to the next one. Your children like olive plants (laughs) all around the table. Behold, they shall be men. They shall be the man. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Why does he say that? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not talking about a scare fear. I'm talking about a reverence there. When we reverence who God is and believe who God is, God wants to bless you. Because it's the beginning of the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. Okay? It's, we don't have any wisdom when we don't fear the Lord. I think Caleb was saying something earlier. I was listening when I was in the other room. He was talking about, you know, the disobedience and people that are not obeying the, the, the God's word and all this stuff. You know what? They don't fear God anymore. Yeah, come on now. If you don't fear God anymore, man, I'm telling you what, you're in a bad place. Yeah. Because you got to understand, God's God. God's big. God can do whatever he wants to do. Why? Because he, because he can. Amen? Because of who he is. And so we learn the fear of the Lord begin the wisdom. Proverbs, uh, which is King Solomon, David's son, he says this. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a wise man, a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who calls it shame. It says, blessings are the head of the righteous. God wants to bless the righteous. And to be righteous simply means to be in right standing with God. When you're doing what's right, God wants to bless the righteous. If you want to be righteous, do what's right. Amen? It don't take any secret, any kind of magical potion or whatever. It's you doing what's right. And see, all of us have a will and a way. God created a will and a way in all of us. All of us have a will to do what we want to do. We sin because we want to. Come on. We do the things because we want to do those things. If we don't want to do them, guess what? You're not going to do them. You're hard-headed enough to say no. Amen? But also we're hard-headed to say, I'll do what I want to do because I want to do it, and nobody's going to tell me what to do. Amen? That's when we get in trouble, right? So he says this. He's talking about different places. Now, Proverbs also says this. A faithful man will abound with blessings. If you're faithful... Blessings come. Again, I want to talk about the blessings of God all over your life. This is what God's willing to make for you in your life. Now, I want to break down some things for you. And again, I I said earlier on in this message, this message could be preached in a lot of different ways. But I want to break it down for you and just let you see some things that maybe we need to do or need to see or need to walk through to understand God's blessings. And here's the first one. Here's the first thing. If you want the blessings of God in your life, you got to come to a place where you simply believe. you got to believe. If you don't believe, guess what? It, there's even men that was crying out and said, God, help my unbelief. I love that. You know why? Because there's times in our life where we go, God, I, I'm having a hard time believe. Help me believe, God. And God's willing to do that. He's not, he's not threatened by that. Come on. He's not threatened by you saying that. He's wanting to help you believe because he's wanting good things for you. Listen, we need to come to a place where we simply believe. Do you believe today? Now, I use this as analysis because it's a simple analysis, and it's just so easy to, to kind of wrap your brain around. But I, I, I say quite often, this chair is designed to hold me. This chair is engineered to hold me. But until I turn around and put my posterior in in this chair, then I really don't believe it. Yeah, because the truth is, you only do what you believe. Right. Y'all missed an opportunity to say amen right there. Amen. Let me try that again. You only do what you believe. Amen? Amen? Because the truth is, unless you do it, you don't believe it. I can say all day long, that's going to, I believe it, I believe, I believe, but unless you do it, you don't. I, I was reading somewhere, was, the guy was talking about telling this guy, oh, I believe that you can take that wheelbarrow and cross that tightrope across that waterfall or whatever. And the guy did it, and he said, man I, man, I believe you can do it again, take that wheelbarrow. And the guy says, why don't you get in the wheelbarrow? And the guy's like, well, I don't know if I believe it that much, amen? He wasn't willing to get in it. He was willing to tell you to go take your wheelbarrow and cross because he believed that you could do it. But whenever he had to face the death of falling, he didn't want to get in it. See, that's how we are. We, we, we stand around and say, oh, I believe until it puts a little action in our pocket. Come on. 
It puts a little shake in our belt. It puts a little move in our groove. Well, I'm all over the place today, man. <laughs> That's good stuff, isn't it? We need to just say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you, and I'm going to do what you called me to do. Here's a great story. There's a story about a guy by the name of Jairus. Jairus was a man of authority. Jairus was a man that was a senior officer in the military. And Jairus' daughter got sick. Now, Jairus could have sent anybody he wanted. He could have sent his servant. He could have sent anybody else to go get Jesus because he had heard about Jesus, and Jesus was healing the sick. But Jairus went himself. Can I tell you, sometimes as men of God, we need to go ourselves, make sure it gets done right. Amen? So here's the man of God. He goes out, and he's trying to find Jesus, and he's finding Jesus. As he finds Jesus and asks Jesus to come to his house, on the way back to his house, all of a sudden, the, issue, the lady with the issue of blood shows up. And this lady causes a little havoc in the, in the streets, and, of course, Jesus heals her. And all of a sudden, now they leave that position, and now one of the servants that was at Jairus' house comes and tells Jairus, Hey, listen, don't worry the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. Come on. See, sometimes our blessings die. Come on. But see, God is not ready to give them up for us. We're not ready to give them up yet. So all of a sudden, God, Jesus says to Jairus, listen, don't worry about what they're saying. We're going to go. And so they go, and now everybody's making fun of them. They're beginning to make fun of them. Like, oh, look at him. He's stupid. What's he doing coming here? This girl's dead. What's he coming here for? And Jairus is just, what he, you know what he's doing? He's believing the master. He's believing the master said, don't worry about it. We're going to go. Now, let me tell you what he does. And I want you to see this and see this real close because it's a, it's a lesson we all can learn. All of a sudden, Jesus says to two of his disciples, I want you and you and the mother and the father. Y'all come and go with me. We're going to see this daughter. Can I tell you sometimes, whenever we feel like our blessings are dead, don't put the wrong people around you. Don't put somebody who's going to be unbelief around you. Put somebody who's going to believe with you. Put somebody who's going to encourage with you. See, sometimes we get ourselves in trouble because we surround ourselves by unbelievers. Amen? So you can only, there's an old saying, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. There's another saying, this is your friends are like elevators. They're either going to take you up or take you down. I'm telling you this morning, you got to know when to get off. Because you got to understand, God is trying to bring you to a place. Maybe the world is telling you, you your blessings is dead, and God's going, no, it's not dead. Yes. Get the right person with you, and let's believe together. And he walks into the room, and he says something to, to Tabitha. I think his name was Tabitha. He says something in, in Arabic. He says something to her, and all of a sudden, she gets up, and all of a sudden, he says, get this girl something to eat. Now, that was a Cajun there. That's a Cajun blessing, amen? amen. She had to be a Cajun. Can I tell you, sometimes whenever our, our blessings that we feel is dying and God is trying to speak life into them, you know why? Because he's trying to spiritually feed them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's times in our life that we're starving ourselves to death, and here's this blessing. She needs some food. Give her some food. Yeah, on, I'm telling you this morning, maybe you're here today, and maybe something God has promised you, and all of a sudden you feel like it's, it's, it's dead and it's lying on a death's bed. You need to feed it, spiritually yeah, speaking. On, you need to believe that God said, you know what? It's going to come to pass. Yeah. I tell people all the time, it's been 10 years since Julie and I went through this kidney transplant. And, I, and during that time, we were going through it, there was a part of me that was struggling inside. I was scared. I mean, I didn't want nobody to cut my, myself and take my kidney out. Who does? But you know what? Somewhere deep down inside, I was believing. I said, God, I don't know how this is going to work out. God, I don't know what you're going to do with the last hour. But God, I'm going to believe. I don't understand how it works, but God, I'm going to believe. And see, that's how we got to get sometime in our life. If we're going to bless, if God's going to run his blessings across us, we got to sometimes just take our mind and say, you know what? I'm going to get rid of my carnal thinking. I'm going to get rid of my stinking thinking and just believe. God, you said it. I'm going to believe it. God, I just have to trust that you can do what you said you're going to do. God, you, you set it out. You're going to finish it. God, whatever you set out, you're going to bring to a to, to, uh, finish. Amen? Several places. One guy, is, he's here, and, and all of a sudden, his son is deaf and dumb uh, over in Mark, and, and he speaks to the spirit, and he says, uh, you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out and all this kind of stuff, and he talks about how he was blessed, and then one of the guys came to him and says, how come we couldn't believe? Why, why can't we believe like you believe? His disciples came to him and says, listen, we, we prayed for this deaf and dumb. We couldn't do it, what you just did. And all of a sudden, he says, some things comes out by fasting prayer. Yeah. Can I tell you, sometimes you got to sacrifice something to get something else. Amen. When we fast and pray, fasting is simply not a diet. Yeah, 
fasting is when we turn down the flesh and we turn up the spirit. Yeah, because the flesh is willing. Come on. Or the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We gotta, sometimes you've got to turn all that down and say, you know what? I'm going to turn down the flesh. I'm going to die to myself. I'm going to turn down the flesh. God, I want you to turn up your spirit. God, I need to hear your spirit. And we do that by denying the flesh. And that's what fasting is. Fasting is saying, you know what? During that time I would normally eat that cheeseburger, I'm going to put it aside, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to fast, and I'm going to cry out to God. And so you're denying that self thing that you want. There's nothing wrong with a good cheeseburger with mayonnaise, mustard, pickles, and ketchup. But sometimes you got to deny it. Amen? Got to learn to say, God, I want what you want. I'm going to believe, God, like you want me to believe. All through the scriptures, the Great Commission, he's talking about believing. He said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, you'll cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents, and they'll drink anything deadly, and it won't even harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. These are things that we need to believe for this morning. Amen? Amen. These are blessings of God. God is trying to put in our life if we believe. Now, here's the next thing. Talking about blessings, okay? Blessings only come from love. Come on. See, God loves us. And until you can wrap your brain around that, you'll never, ever receive that. Because, see, you're here today, and, and somebody's told you that they love you, and they, they left you. You're here today, and somebody's told you that I love you, and they've done something horrible to you. And in your mind, you're thinking, well, if that's what love is, I don't want it. But, see, when we understand God's blessing, see, God always is on the increase. God always is promoting. He's not demoting. He's always promoting. God is blessing us. God loves us. He says in several places, he talks about love. In one place, he says, by all this, we know that you're my disciple if you love one another. Luke says it in another place. He goes on to say, a son asks for bread. His father among him will, will give him a stone. Listen, when we cry out and ask God for bread, he don't give us a stone. He gives us bread. He even goes on to say, if an earthly father loves his children, how much more do I love you? See, we got to get our minds around the real love that Christ has for us, not the carnal love that we somehow have conjured up in our minds because we, we, we have a perverted type love. I mean, we even say things like, I love my tractor. Amen? I do love my Kubota. It's a good tractor. Amen? But you know what? That's nothing. That, just, that thing could be gone tomorrow. It's nothing but materialism, whatever it is. But see, God's love for us is an everlasting love, a love that he sent his son Jesus to die at Calvary so we can stand here on this simple morning and proclaim the word of the Lord Amen. and shout from the rooftop, Jesus loves me. Amen. Goes on to say, he talks about in Matthew 22, and he says, love God with all your heart, body, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor. And he goes on to say that all the prophets and all the law hangs on this. Can I tell you, everything that we do, all the blessings of God that we have, hangs on love. Amen. You got to learn that God's love is much deeper than our love. God's love is only a surface type love. God's love goes deeper than that. When we can wrap our brain around the fact that God loves us so much in spite of ourselves, he died at Calvary knowing, knowing that we were going to mess up, knowing that the guy was going to pluck his beard out, knowing that the guy was going to stick a sword in his side, knowing that the guy was going to do all these horrible things, beat him with a whip. He knew all those things, and in spite of all that, he loved him enough to die for him. Now, you know, I can say that 10 times over, and we still have a hard time wrapping our brain around it. Because I can't imagine loving somebody doing something that horrific, that, that horrible to me or to anyone else. But you know what? God does. And that's where blessings come. Blessings come from the love of God. Here's one that you've got to get. You've got to get this one. We don't go any further. You've got to get this one. You ready? If you're going to walk in the blessings of God, you must enjoy the journey. Yeah. You got to enjoy the journey. You got to enjoy what God has you. The Bible says we have to learn to be content no matter which state that we're in. We got to learn to say, God, I'm going to enjoy where you have me, not where you have someone else. And quit wanting my journey. Amen. I don't want yours. You shouldn't want mine. Yeah. Listen, I'm telling you today, sometimes I look around and I remember thinking, well, I wish I had that guy's anointing until I heard what that guy went through. Yeah, and I'm thinking, oh, you can keep that. Amen. Yeah. I don't want none of that because I don't want to go with you with through. Listen, I'm telling you today, enjoy your own journey. Amen. Quit trying to have somebody else's journey. Quit trying to, 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 to worry about wherever somebody else is going. Worry about what God is doing for you in your life. 
take the journey God's given you and be excited about what God. If you can't be excited about what God's given you, you can't be excited about what God's given somebody else. You got to learn to enjoy the journey that you're on. God has a plan for you on a personal level bigger than mine. Amen. And again, God is not a, a, a favorable God where He's going to favor me more than He favors you. Amen. God loves all of us equally. God wants your journey to be just as nice as my journey. You just got to enjoy the journey. How many times have you done, have you heard people just complain about their journey? Yeah, come on now. Yeah. Hear it all the time. Oh, I can't believe I'm, God brought me to Fort Polk. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot over there. I don't want to go for it. Man, I can't you. All of a sudden you come here and all of a sudden you don't want to leave. Amen. Amen. It's God's place. Amen. Amen. Y'all should shout that a little loud. It's God's place. Amen. That's more like it. Amen. <laughs> God places us in places that he wants us because he knows that we need to enjoy where he has us. Amen. Quit worrying about other places. Quit worrying about other journeys. Enjoy the journey that God's given you. Amen. And I promise you, when you learn to do that, you'll be happier than you've ever been before. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your journey. None other but yours. God has a plan. Here's the next one here. When we really bless when we understand that God gives us what we call stay in power. We need staying power. Too many times people are just willing to, something sharp comes along, they just throw up their hands and quit. It kills me, it kills me, it kills me when you see people that, that first little problem in a marriage, they're ready to divorce. Now, I'm not saying some divorces are not necessary because there's some things that, 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 you know, it's crazy. You know, but I'm telling you today, there's some things that we could, we, we should have a, more of a staying power to get past. You know, when somebody tells me, well, you know, you can listen to this guy. He's been married for six months. He's really got something to tell you. No, I want somebody who's been married for 45 years to tell me something. Somebody's been born 40 years. You can tell me something. Amen. you got stay in power. And stay in power is what God gives us, what we call the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that stay in power that we need to fight to the end. There are people that just so quick to throw up their hands and quit. Well, I didn't get the blessings that I was asking for, so I'm out of there. I didn't get what I, what I was praying for, so I'm out of there. We need to have that stay in power. One of the things that I, I don't mind telling you as a pastor of Christian Living Fellowship that I just love so much is when somebody asks me, how long have you been pastoring that church? I love telling them I've been here for 19 years, going on 20 years. You know what kind of look I get? <laughs> really? What? You know why? Because there's no stay in power in people no more. I remember my dad, you know, when, when our generation, my, my father's generation, when they got a job, they retired from it. Amen? On, now. now everybody's got a job looking for something better to come along. Yeah, come, on, come on. I'm telling you today that we need that stay in power by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why did you use that as, as part of the blessings of God? Because I want you to understand something. Now listen to me very carefully. The anointing that God has in your life, It is not a contract. It's a covenant. There's a huge difference from contracts and covenant. See, God's anointing that he has for us is a covenant. A covenant is not something that's broken. People break contracts all the time. But God stay in power that he has for you and I, the salvation he has for us, it's a covenant Amen. that we have with him. It's not a contract. Yeah, on, it's not a contract that you can get some smart lawyer to get you out of. Yeah, on, it's a covenant. There's a difference between a contract and a covenant. Yeah. If you won't stay in power with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you've got to understand that you're operating under a covenant, Amen. not a contract. Here today, going tomorrow. My wife and I, when, when Louisiana passed a law 15 years ago, I guess it was. I don't remember when it was. 15, 20 years ago, maybe. They passed a law with covenant marriages. For those who don't know what a covenant marriage is, in the state of Louisiana, you can get a covenant marriage. A covenant marriage is something that you have to go through counsel to get, and you have to go through counsel before you get divorced. You can't get divorced easy. It's like several years to get divorced. But I remember when the covenant marriages came out. We had been married at a time for 15 years. And we went and we turned our, our, our license in and got a covenant marriage because we wanted to make sure that we, we had a marriage that wasn't something easily broken. Amen? Amen. Today, people want to just throw up their hands and quit when the slightest little problem comes along. 
When you go to a wedding, one of the things I do at a wedding, when you go to a wedding, and I talk about the, the, the people that are out there, you're here as a witness. You're not here just to get the cake. Amen? <laughs> you're here as a witness because whenever you witness that person standing there on that, on that morning and they're looking in each other's eye and they got this little flutter in their eye and they're, oh, I love you, I love you, and you love me, and they're saying all these vows and they're all this great yummy, yummy, yummy stuff going on. All of a sudden, you know what? You're a witness of that. Because in six months from now, in a year from now, when they don't even like each other, come on, and they're fighting with each other, you can say, I remember the day. Yeah, come on, I remember the day when I saw you standing at your wedding day and how you couldn't keep your hands off her. I don't even love her. You love her? You know you do. <laughs> come on, somebody. Yeah, We've got to be that witness to stand before them and say, you know what? You're not going to walk away from this. I saw you that day when you stood there and made goo-goo eyes at her. Amen? Amen. Shoots to make goo-goo eyes. Amen? I've been married 30, <laughs> going on 35 years, 35, we're going into our 35th, right, 34, going on 35, <laughs> she won't tell me nothing, man, she gives that look like, uh-huh, what is it, and when I get it wrong, she's like, huh, you'll be buying me something later, amen, <laughs> and the truth is, I will, here's my wallet, <laughs> See, that's right. On to the next. But you know what? When you marry, I, I know Mike and Loretta just celebrate 40, 40 years. You know, that's encouraging. Man, you look around and you see somebody that's encouraging. They can say, you know what? I stuck it. I stood through the thick and thin. Because I'm sure it, it all wasn't a bed of roses. I mean, it never is. But God wants us to stick it out. Amen? Amen. Stay in power. We need that stay in power. Here's the other part here. We're talking about blessings. <laughs> Well, I'm keeping y'all a little late today. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> Who'll give me five minutes? You might give me five minutes. Right there. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I mean, I got a half hour right there, man. <laughs> Don't ever go into that. That that's a bad joke, amen. I promise I ain't gonna keep you that long. <laughs> I don't know. I ain't gonna promise. Who knows? <laughs> We're blessed when we learn to be a servant. We're blessed when we learn to serve. Even whenever the, the mother came to Jesus and the two sons, James and John, said, look, why don't you put my sons at the right hand? And, yeah. and, and he said, listen, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. And when you understand, blessings come through serving others. Yes. Come on, somebody. When you humble yourself in the sight of God, he will lift you up. Amen. Whatever is done in private, God will reveal in public. Amen. When you learn to be a servant of the Most High God, I'm telling you, you can walk in the blessings of God. Yes, on, because when you humble yourself and you say, God, I want to do what you called me to do. Listen, there's nothing like serving. Amen. If you've never been a servant, I'm telling you today, you're missing out on the blessings of God. Because yes, everybody wants, they all, we eat this selfishness where everybody wants, 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 wants. And God is trying to say, listen, be a servant. Here's the next thing. Blessings come when we learn to invite others into God's presence. Learn to invite others into the same thing that God has got for us. You know, too many people, they go into church and, and, and they get to the point sometimes, if you're not careful, they'll say, I got mine, you get yours. Come on. Yeah. But you know what? Blessing is when we learn to invite others into the same thing God has given us. Amen. When we learn to invite others into the same kingdom that God brought us into instead of just keeping it for ourselves. There are some churches today, and, 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 and I, I know this to be true, I've seen it, where they just want a few. Yeah. They just want a few. Listen, I, somebody says, it's not about the numbers. Can I tell you something? For me, it is. Yes. Why? Because I want to unload hell and load up heaven. Amen. I want as many Amen. people as God allows us to, to speak into the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't ever tell me, well, I, you know, just let's just be us a little few and no more. Can I tell you, it's exciting when you, the blessings of God is when you learn to invite others into what you have. Yes. They tell a statistic, and, I, and the first time I heard the statistic, I didn't believe it until I've been around long enough to see it. But they tell you that a person that is, comes to a church that gets radically saved and fired for God, loves what God is doing in their life and their family, within the first two years of their being in that fellowship, they invite more people in the first two years than they do the rest of the time they're there. Wow, yeah. oh, some of you think that's, are you thinking right now, was the last time I invited somebody? And you go, how long have I been here? Amen. But the truth is, you know what? Man, I, blessings come when you learn to invite others into the same presence that you have. Amen. It's not about being selfish or stingy. It's about inviting others. Listen, God says we can go to the throne of grace with a boldness. 
God, I want my others to have what I have. God, I don't want to keep it for myself. I want to invite others to the same blessings I have in my life. Here's the next thing. Blessings come when we know without a doubt that he will meet all our needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. You begin to walk in the blessings of God that when you understand that God will meet your needs according to what he has. He said, I'll meet all your needs. Nothing that you have today that, that, that you, listen, you're not lacking anything that God can't meet. Nothing that you're facing today that God cannot supply. All your needs according to riches and glory. I, Zach and I were talking. He was sharing with me. And, and I, later on, Zach, I found out later that, that we got it too. But he said to me, he said, man, he said, I'm blessed. He said, I don't even have to pay my utilities this month. He said, they had a little deal. They rolled over and they paid his utility for the month. And all of a sudden, I found out today from Shauna that my utilities got paid too. Man, I like that. Amen? Amen. Come on, man. God says, I'll meet all your needs. I like, look, you want to pay my utilities every week. You can do that. Amen? But you know what? God says he'll meet all your needs, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter where you're at. God wants to meet your needs. Here's the last thing this morning, and I'll end up with this one, is this. Blessings come when we understand that we need, without a doubt, to be grounded. You got to be grounded. He goes on to say in different places that Christ may dwell instead strengthen you sorry that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints with the width lift depth and height all these things he even says in another place he says indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and not and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you've heard we need to be grounded in the things of God if you want the blessings of God and you want blessings to follow you in your life, you got to be grounded. Now, let me explain to you this, okay? And I used this this morning. I just kind of walked over and as an illustration. This, for those who don't know what this is, and we hadn't done it in a long time, uh, this is salt. And for those who remember, uh, we had a salt covenant. I preached about a salt covenant in the church, and we all got a little thing of salt. And we went into a covenant with each other and poured it in here. But you've seen this for a while up here. It's, it's salt. And so we did a salt covenant. But just imagine for just a moment, just as he talked about Abraham and, and all the, the sand on the seashore, the blessings and all this stuff, just imagine this representing a bunch of blessings, okay? This is a ton of blessings right here, which it is. Everybody in here that's covenant together, we're blessed together. But just imagine God wants to give you all these blessings. And... For whatever reason, this is all you got as a foundation. And so you put that there as a foundation, and you try to put the blessings on top of it, you ain't going to hold it. It's going to fall, right? Here's what I want you to understand. If you want to carry the blessings of God, then you need to be grounded in the things of God. If you're grounded in the things of God, the, the stronger your foundation, the more you can carry and so if you're going to be carrying the blessings of God in your life, you've got to be grounded in the things of God. You've got to have a strong foundation, grounded and rooted in the things of love with God. Because the more that you ground it, the more foundation that you have, the better foundation you have, the more blessing God can give you. Because, see, if you don't have a good foundation and you're not grounded and God tries to bless you, you might take it to be something else and, 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 and just go out, all out of whack, you know? That's why even the scripture talks about, it talks about leadership. And one of the things it talks about leadership is said a leader is not to be novice or he'll get swollen up full of pride. Because many times, if you're going to be in leadership, you need to be grounded. Because if a person is not, how many times have you promoted somebody in a leadership position that wasn't ready for a leadership position, that wasn't grounded, and they blew it? You see it all the time. People in authority. Man, you put a little guy, a 19-year-old in authority, you know, and he's in authority over some other guys, whatever, and all of a sudden he just gets arrogant and he blows it, yeah, come on you know? If you're going to be in authority, you've got to have a ground about you. You've got to be grounded about you. Same thing with blessings of God. If you want God's blessings to be poured upon you, you've got to have a foundation that you can hold them. Amen. If you don't have a foundation, you're not grounded in the things of God. You'll never hold yeah, the blessings of God. Amen. The blessings of God will overweigh you and, and, and cause you to tilt, cause you to fall, cause you to fumble, cause you to do all the things that you shouldn't do. Amen. You need to be grounded in the things of God. Every time I think about being grounded, I'm reminded of my dad. And, and this is what happened to him. It was kind of a funny story. But my dad was a car guy. 
you know, and all these car guys in here, and, and Mike, I know you can appreciate, uh, my dad had a 1965 Galaxy 500. Remember those 65 Galaxy 500? Man, that was a cool car, man. Dual exhaust. My dad always had a car, a family car that rumbled, amen? And he loved his car and dual exhaust. Man, I mean, it was, that was our family car. It was his 1965 Galaxy 500. He loved it. And I'll never forget, he got up to go to work a couple of mornings, and he wouldn't start. And it was just driving him nuts. He couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start. It wouldn't start. And so finally, he just said, you know what? I'm done. He brought it down to the dealership, and he traded it in on an LTD. And he had that LTD for like two or three days and realized he didn't like it. And he wanted his car back. So he goes back down to the dealership, and he goes and he sees the salesperson. I remember because I was a young boy. And he went in there and he says, hey, man, he says, I, I, I think I want to get my car back. I want to buy my car back. And the guy said, well, I already sold it. And my dad said, you sold it? What was wrong with it? And the guy said, it was a ground wire. If your car is not grounded, it won't start. Something as simple as a ground wire calls him to give up something he really liked. Can I tell you something? Let that not be us. Let's be grounded in the things of God. Because see, I'm processing if you don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> if you're not grounded, in the things of God, you'll take all the things that you want, and you'll like them, until something said about something that you're doing that you know is wrong and you don't like anymore. And you start just chunking it away. Come on. Come on. You see, I can get here and I can preach about all these great blessings and you can amen me, praise God, come on Jesus, man, all these fantastic stuff. And all of a sudden I can say something about tithing. You're like, <laughs> don't like that one. You get left that one alone. Can I tell you something? If you're going to grow in the things of God, you've got to be grounded in the things of God. And if you're grounded in the things of God, those little things that you don't understand now, God will reveal them to you later. If you don't understand some of the things that you're struggling with or seeing in the Scripture, because, see, somebody's been whispering in your ear and saying, that's not God, that's not Bible, that's not whatever, learn to find out for yourself what it means. Because, see, I grew up in a denomination used to tell me things all the time until later on I found out what they were trying to tell me wasn't even true. Wasn't even gospel, but it was it was it was their sway of what they wanted to to, to teach. You know what you call that? That's called spiritual manipulation. That's right. Bam. If you hadn't been here for any length of time and never heard me say this, I'm going to say it very clear and very plain. Don't believe nothing I got to say. Read it for yourself. If I say something that don't line up with the Word of God, then you come see me. But I'm telling you today, we need to know what God's Word says. And when we operate under the things of God and we're grounded in the things of God, we grow Amen. with the blessings of God. Because God wants to bless you today like never before. But if you can't handle it, you don't want it. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. Father, I thank you for this day and this time. And God, I pray by your anointing, by your blessings, by your calling, for each and every man, woman, and child in this place. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe something I said about the blessings of God, one of these areas that we talked about, I don't need to go through all of them, but maybe something was said today that really pierced your heart. And maybe it's an area that you're struggling with. Maybe it's an area that you're confused with. Maybe it's an area that you don't understand. Or maybe it's just something that you just don't want. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, you talked about something that I need prayer in. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to call you out. Just here to pray for you. Talked about something that you need prayer in, whatever it may be. 
right where you're at, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand, put it up, put it down. Put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Just raise it, put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Just raise it up, put it up, put it down. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you so much for your blessings. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you love us in spite of ourselves. And God, on this day and this time, God, hands that came up all over the sanctuary, God, you know what they need. I don't, but you do. And God, I pray today that you strengthen them, give them wisdom, give them insight, give them direction. God, let them begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Let them begin to have a deeper understanding and rooted in your love and in your purpose so they can receive your promises. Bless them today, Father. Use them today. Watch over them. Guide them. Direct them. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you came this morning. Maybe you realize that you're lost in need of a Savior. Or maybe you came this morning and you said, Pastor, I realize today that I'm backslidden and I need to get my heart right with God. Right there where you're at, let's get that right. Just begin to pray from the heart. Just simply pray, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent of all my wrongdoings. Jesus, save me. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior, my Master and my King. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you prayed that prayer this morning for the first time, or maybe it's a prayer of rededication. Again, I'm not here to embarrass your call. Yeah, I just want to pray for you. If you prayed that prayer this morning, just raise your hand and put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God, you see these hands, you know these hearts. and God, I pray that you get them plugged into the right fellowship and let them grow. Let them grow in you. Touch them, feel them, anoint them, use them in a mighty way as we honor you today in all that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive that word, let's give God a hand.